Hello, I'm Peter Higgins, the director of the IBD program at the University of Michigan. Hello, I'm Kay Souter, the project manager of IBD research here at the University of Michigan. And we are responding to a Wellspring board research idea posted by Eric Polsonelli about lifestyle changes in inflammatory bowel disease. Now this is a pretty broad topic, but a really important one. And as Eric points out, there's not a lot of data and there are a lot of claims on the internet of doing exercise or sleeping better, doing yoga or you name it, will increase your quality of life and reduce your risk of having a flare with IBD. But there's not a lot of evidence to back it up. So Eric is asking us to look at a bunch of things, possibly sleep, physical activity, eating activity, and a variety of other things. So it's a pretty broad topic. And we thought about it a lot. Food is a pretty tough area. And actually to do it right requires you to somehow control people's diet. It's pretty hard to do. So we decided to save that for another time and focus particularly on physical activity and sleep and heart rate. So the place that we'll want to start is with the longitudinal observational study, um, which we will observe and measure things about IBD patients over time and then follow them to see if the measurements can predict outcomes. We think that this would be a good opportunity to look at activity and sleep trackers like the Fitbit devices. Um, we've designed a study using the Fitbit HR device. Um, this measures sleep, heart rate, um, and may be predictive of flares. So we hypothesize that having less sleep may predict flares, having less activity may predict flares, and having a high heart rate, which may be indicative of dehydration or poor physical condition, may predict flares. So to have the right kind of subjects, we need folks who are likely to flare really soon so we don't have to run the study for a long time. There are a few situations where we know patients are likely to flare. One is when they've just had a flare and they've been started on steroids to control their disease. As folks taper down on prednisone, about one third will flare before they reach the end of the taper, often towards the end of the flare, around 15, 10, or five milligrams. While about two thirds will make it to the end of the taper and do just fine. So we'd like to select patients and recruit patients who have just gotten a flare under control and have started prednisone and are about 40 milligrams. At that point, we're going to teach them how to use the tracker, make sure they know how to charge it and wear it every day, and it is connected to the Fitabase database. That way we'll collect their data very easily and they won't have to do anything other than make sure it's charged and it stays on. Then we will track them over the course of the taper and see who makes it to the end of the taper doing fine and see who doesn't make it to the end of the taper and then look back at the data and try to analyze it and see if there are patterns that predict who's going to flare and who's not going to flare and see if we can actually accurately predict what effect lifestyle, activity, and sleep have on whether or not you're going to have a flare. So we're very excited about the idea of Wellspring Board and crowdfunding and having patients and families contribute to getting research done. We're really excited about this idea and are hoping that we will come up with a way to use lifestyle changes to predict flares and possibly give you some reassurance that you're not likely to have a flare in the future. Just think the opportunity of being able to predict a flare from your wrist. Thank you and we hope you contribute. We'd love to get this research project done.